All right, so we are heading into town, but while we're doing that, I thought we'd talk about oh, there's some foul garbage. the five things that we consider when we're picking a site at our campgrounds. So, so the number one consideration for us, because we nine times out of 10 travel with the dogs is we make sure that we stay away from the shower houses. And a, a lot of people, they rely on the shower houses uh, and that's great if that's what you do with your trailer. Um, but we use our trailer and everything that's in it. So, you know, we use the sinks, the showers, the, you know, the toilet, everything. So we try to stay away from the shower houses because the shower houses mean traffic and the traffic means barking. And if you happen to be near one of those shower houses where they have the door that slams, it'll happen like every four or five minutes, all day, all night long. And that's not enjoyable. Right. So number one is stay away from the shower houses. Uh, number two is we like to stay in the outside of the loops. And I don't know if it's this way everywhere, but in the Oregon State Parks, the outside of the loops are always larger sites and they're always at an angle. So that gives us um, an easier, uh, there's an airport over there. Yeah. There's always been an airport, Jerry. The Nahalem Bay sticker has a picture of an airplane on it. And if you look down here, there's a beautiful view of the runway and it takes off right over the water. Yeah, there it is. Nahalem Bay, it's gorgeous. Sorry about that. Um, outside of the loops, yeah, bright and shiny. Um, we've come here, you know, and I've never, never, ever noticed that. Anyway, we like to stay in the outside of the loops. Uh, typically, you don't have people behind you. Um, the traffic's less, but the number one reason is the sites are bigger and they're at an angle, which makes it easier to back in. And we, of course, learned that the hard way by uh, getting sites on the inside loop and the driveways are exactly perpendicular. And if you happen to have trees guarding the mouth of your site and overhanging branches, it can be a nightmare to back your trailer in there without scraping the branches or ripping off your air conditioner or your awning or... Right. In fact, it was the state park that we're staying at right now where we made the mistake of getting on the inside of the loop. And I actually asked the ranger uh, what the fine was for cutting down a tree uh, because I'm sure that the fine for cutting down a tree would be less expensive than repairing my roof. Uh, I didn't have to do either, thank goodness, but uh, we did. Five people with flashlights guiding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so, unfortunately you showed up after dark on that trip and you were trying to back up into trees in a dark spot perpendicular at night with an extra long trailer it, it was the perfect storm right it, it just it was not the ideal situation all right tip number three or consideration number three when we're planning our stays at a campground is uh dog accessibility and dog runs slash dog parks uh again we travel with the dogs a lot and so that's always something that we like uh we like to have access to you know uh every campground you go to uh, requires the dogs to be on leashes and so i think you can go that way i'm gonna i'm gonna, gonna go, go the back way. way um they you know they they require dogs to be on leashes and that's fair i appreciate that but it's also nice to be able to let your dogs off leash and let them run in an enclosed uh dog park uh, the dog park out at Lapine is massive, and it's we, we love that one for the dogs. They could get out and run. And Rogue River. Uh, Rogue yeah. River had a really nice one. Uh, we've been to a couple that were... Cove Palisades has a very nice dog park. Cove Palisades. So the state parks are, are starting to get in tune with uh, creating dog space. So same with the KOAs. But some of them are small, and some of them are big, so you just got to look at... The website to see right but yep. that's definitely something that we check on when we're making a reservation you know do they have a dog run or dog space 
and some of them it can be just nearby like Fort Stevens doesn't have a dog run but what two three miles outside of the gate they have a, a local dog park that's beautiful it's got a small dog area it's got a big dog area and uh, uh, for us in particular we have Siberian Huskies which can never be off leash because if you let them off leash they're gone so we want to let them run but we need to be able to uh, get a hold of them at some point and put them back on leash we don't have Huskies for that reason <laughs> So, All I don't, right. I don't number four. <laughs> tip number four. Uh, tip number four is we, and we learned this the hard way, you have to learn to read the map. You, you, you have to learn to break the code on, on the size spacing. And uh, so the way that Oregon State Parks does it is you have a little block and the block is color coded based on the uh, type of site it is so whether it's full hookup or not and then there's a number in that and that is the length of the full space from the start of the pad to the back of the pad and so we know that we need 52 feet uh, and so and that that accommodates the truck and the trailer and so we had to we had to figure that one out and we arrived at some places that was a little small we had to drop the trailer and park somewhere else or park sideways or whatever or move all together like we did. or move all together like we had to do at Wallawa um, yes. luckily the park rangers were very uh, helpful and they got us moved into a really nice big space so anyway uh, make sure that you check the legend on the maps for your sites and if you're booking online most uh rv parks campgrounds have a map and they'll they'll tell you what the size of the spaces are but sometimes you need to call and check uh before you make that reservation okay so tip number five is uh think about what you want to do when you go camp so we pick places based on uh, what's at the destination. Is it hiking? Is it biking? Walking on the beach? Or maybe it's absolutely nothing and we're just trying to get away. For those of us that are weekend warriors, it's usually about a destination and what what you do once you get there. You know, this weekend it was, number one, just to get out of town. Um, but some beach time also and so that that works out well for us especially with our park system here in Oregon if we want the desert rivers mountains. hiking biking mountains or beach um, it's all available for us you know within a two-hour uh, circle yeah. so anyway tip number five is Consider the destination and what's there. 